Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Blinds. Today we're going to be looking at repairing this vintage He-Man and the Masters of the Universe attack track. Now this was recently sent in to me by Bass as a very kind donation to the channel and I thought it would be a great one to work out how to fix because the bulk of the toy is there but there are a few sort of key pieces missing and to be honest I don't even know if it works. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is have a go at getting it sort of up and running. But let me show you a couple of other issues that uh, will need to be fixed if we do actually manage to get this one running. The first issue is actually the rubber bands on the tracks. I don't think I've seen one of these attack tracks with the uh, bands in place for a very long time. It always seems to be uh, broken or missing. And this one actually has all four of the bands missing. So I'm going to uh, work out something that we can use to make a replacement for those. Uh, then if we turn this attack track over, you can see uh, that the uh, battery cover is missing. And I've had a quick look on eBay and people are selling the battery covers, but sort of, you know, between 10 and 20 pounds for a battery cover. I think we can make something that will do the job uh, fairly straightforward so I'm going to uh, make something that will fit over that and because with the attack track most of the time you see it like that you're not actually going to see the bottom of it so I think we can make something that will do the job quite nicely with relative ease so uh, we'll try and uh, get something made for that and obviously we have to uh, make sure that it does work uh, as I say I haven't tried this one so we'll clean the contacts up and see if we can get that going it's also missing a lot of the stickers there are a few if I turn it around you can see on this side it has some of those but uh, on this side most of them are missing so I will make a new uh, sort of set of stickers for this we'll make a replacement set of those I think even the ones on the back are missing so we get that all sort of looking nice it may be I remove a lot of these original ones some of them are sort of in okay condition other ones are pretty worn so I might I'll, I'll sort of do a mishmash I'll replace some and I'll leave some as well but it might be nice just to make this look sort of brand new so we'll do the, the sort of whole works it's also missing the seat belt there should be a strap that goes around here to hold the figure in place if we put he-man in you'll be able to see uh, exactly why you need the strap you can see he does hold in reasonably well but actually if you tilt this vehicle either way uh, the figures have a tendency to fall out without the seat belt so we'll make a new seat belt that uh, holds the figure in nicely there uh, but yeah the first thing to do let's see if we can get this one running see if it, it works most of these old toys basically if you clean up the contacts and uh, run the motor or sort of roll the motor over uh, by hand a few times to clean the brushes on the motor it will kick in and I have a feeling uh, it, this one should do just that um, you'll seen in a recent video I was working on a dragon walker and that uh, was very easy to get working so let's have a go at this we'll uh, see if we can get the motor working and then once we've done that we'll give it a good clean and start repairing the rest of it before I even put any batteries in this I'm going to clean the contacts and to use that I'm going to to use a contact cleaner so this is little bits of uh, glass fiber all it sort of held together and you just rub it over the surface of the bits of metal you want to clean I've used these uh, many times before and I've shown them in quite a lot of videos uh, you can see here the contacts aren't too bad this one is a bit corroded so uh, just a quick sort of rub over to get the worst of the corrosion off then we'll try some batteries and see if uh, it does actually work but uh, first thing let's clean these up as best we can Okay, so those have cleaned up pretty nicely. There's still a little bit of tarnish on that one, but I think the actual contact part is as clean as it needs to get. Next thing I'm going to do is actually turn the motor over a little bit, even before putting the batteries in. So on this vehicle, if you get one of the attack track wheels and sort of push it to one end so it locks into the gear, you can then turn this and you can hear the motor turning inside. So if I just turn this a little bit, it will clean the brushes on the motor uh, they get a bit tarnished just like these contacts do so if we just clean up a little bit that's probably enough so uh, let's give this a try put the batteries in the right way around in place And now we'll see if this actually runs. Chances are it will. These toys are pretty sort of uh, sturdy and built quite well. So let's just give this a go. Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Straight away. Let's uh, run this across my desk just so you can see it working. Yeah, there you go. That was uh, pretty straightforward. As I say, they're normally 
pretty uh, sort of reliable that you can get them working unless they've been dunked in water or something like that the motors just seize up a little bit and a little bit of cleaning like that will get it working so now we can move on to actually giving this a clean you can see there's quite a lot of dust and dirt all over the sort of the main part of the body uh, so I'm going to give this a wash with some hot soapy water because this has got electronics inside it you don't want to actually submerge it in the water I'm just going to get an old toothbrush with some hot soapy water on it and I'll brush away all of this dust and grime and give it a good clean and then and dry it thoroughly making sure not to get any water inside it or any water in the battery compartment I'll also see if I can get rid of some of these little scuff marks off I have a feeling a bit of lighter fluid and a cotton bud uh, may remove those but we'll give everything a good clean and then we can start fixing some of the issues <laughs> Giving toys a good clean always makes a massive difference to how they look and this one actually already looks a whole lot better just for having a wash there with some hot soapy water and I was able with the toothbrush to clean out all of the sort of bits of dirt and that and even actually get inside these wheels which are a little bit awkward but you can get the toothbrush inside and I've cleaned out as much dirt as I can. There's still a few little sort of scuffs on the plastic which I might come back to but uh, really overall the whole thing is looking a lot better even the black marks that were here on the front where it sort of rubs on the uh, floor when you're sort of playing with it um, you can see those have got a lot better just again hot soapy water and a toothbrush and I was able to get most of the dirt out so I think uh, that is going to be good enough what we've got to do now though is make a battery cover my plan for this battery cover is really just to have a go and make something I've got no real sort of plan in place I've gone online and actually I went onto eBay and found someone selling uh, the uh, missing battery cover and they got some quite good photos of what the original one looked like and I reckon using some one millimeter styrene sheet which is what I've got here I can cut something and fashion it so that it does the same job as what the original would have done you can see here that we've got a sort of indented battery compartment so we need to cut a square that fits right to the edge of these outer bits of plastic and it sort of rests on this inner piece of plastic and then there's a little bit of leeway that you can push it backwards so that there's a clip here that uh, sort of unclips as you as you nudge it backwards and then there's some other clips that go on these two little sort of uh, pegs on either side so I think I can make something Thing. I'm just going to sort of wing it really I will cut a square and then see what I can fashion as I go along and uh, if it works it works if it doesn't well you know we've not lost anything but uh, let's try cutting some bits of uh, this styrene and see what we can fashion
And after about 20 minutes work, this is what I've managed to make. It's not perfect, but it actually does a pretty reasonable job. I can see a couple of things that I possibly should have done differently. I've created this clip piece and I've made that out of two millimeter styrene. Uh, so you've got a sort of two millimeter piece and then another two millimeter piece on top. Actually, that top piece probably could have done with being a one millimeter sort of piece of plastic. It's a little bit too rigid. So I would, was hoping to add a sort of little clipping piece, so a sort of angled sort of uh, triangular piece on there to actually clip this in place. But because I put the two millimeter piece on there, there's no flex in that piece. So, uh, you know, that I would go back and modify, but everything else seems to work quite well. I've really tried to copy exactly what was in the photos that I managed to find. So I've got these two little C-shaped pieces on the either side and let those clip onto these little sort of extrusions on the battery pack. And you can see the idea is you slot this in slightly back of those pieces and then slide it forwards. And that's where the clipping mechanism at the front should be. But actually this is going to hold in really very nicely. You can see that's pretty flush with the bottom. So even without the clip, uh, I think that will work. It may be that as you drag this along the floor that that gets pulled backwards but you know I think I can live with that for the moment I may modify that again in the future but overall for it's taken me sort of 20 minutes to half an hour to make that I'm really very pleased with how that has uh, ended up and you can remove it quite easily so yeah it's a pretty half decent little battery cover that obviously it now needs painting at the moment we're currently in lockdown I know I definitely don't have any red paint so I will give this a quick undercoat with some grey primer and at some point when I can get back down to the local model shops that we have around here I'll buy an orange paint but uh, for now I'm just going to paint this grey so that it sort of uh, fits in but uh, doesn't uh, yeah it doesn't match the rest of the vehicle but as I say we're currently in lockdown and none of the shops are open and I've been buying stuff online randomly picking colours and that never particularly works for me but I'd much rather go to an actual shop and see what they have so that I can choose something that is the same colour orange as the attack track but for now I think that battery cover will do the job very nicely. For the belt to hold He-Man in place, there are actually two little pegs on either side. You can see there's a peg there and a peg there. And the original belt was a piece of rubber that just sort of went around, it's got a few holes in it. And I was thinking I could actually buy some rubber and just sort of recut one. And then I remembered that a while back I'd done a project where I'd bought a load of pleather to uh, make some uh, sort of bits for another toy. And I thought that actually this is gonna be quite good stuff to use because it's it's got a little bit of stretch to it and it's very easy to cut. So what I've done is cut a strip of that. This is a one centimeter wide strip and it is 11 centimeters long I've rounded the ends and then put a little hole in each end and that is going to do the job really quite nicely so let's bring in the attack track so what we can do is we'll take the strap and we'll push that over one of the pegs so you can see that that holds in place we'll put the figure on let's get the man sat down twist his legs around so that they are actually in place and then we can thread the strap around his body like so, we'll turn the attack track round and then using the hole on the other side of the strap we can just push that over. Yeah, and that's going to hold the figure in really quite nicely. I know it's not exactly like the original strap would have been but it does the job. At some point I may buy some uh, rubber or a thin sheet of rubber and I can sort of recut it but for now I think that pleather will do a very good job. The next issue I need to cover is the missing stickers. Now, as I say, this has some stickers on it. They're a little bit worn. This one at the top is actually fairly warm, so I might remove that one. The ones on the other side are not too bad, so I'm gonna leave those in place, but we're missing a lot on this side. One's on the back. So what I've done is I've had a quick search online. I found a fairly low res scan of the original sticker sheet. And I think that's the one that people are selling on eBay. You see a lot of people uh, sort of printing out pre-printed versions of these stickers. Uh, and the ones that I've seen on eBay are really very poor quality. But I think we can make a better version using that scan. And uh, I have to say a big thanks to uh, Chris, who was on my uh, Facebook group, who uh, suggested a new bit of software that was going to help me uh, sort of upscale that image and then I'll touch it up uh, in Photoshop. So I've taken that scan. I've run it through a new bit of software that I've got called Gigapixel and I've uh, then taken all of that into Photoshop and tidied it up. So let's take a quick look at that process.
And after a fair bit of work, you can see I've ended up with this file, which is a tidied up version of that low res scan, upscaled and then lots of sort of touching up done to make it look really nice and high res. Uh, and this I've printed out onto some sticky back printer paper. This is actually a matte printer paper. You can print it out onto matte or onto gloss, depends what you really want the sort of final result to look like. In this instance, I've gone matte and I've actually sprayed a, a thin coat of a clear varnish over the top of it just to make it look a little bit shinier. And as you can see, they do look really quite nice. So now all I've got to do is cut out the ones that I'm missing and stick them uh, back onto the attack track. If you want to do this on your vehicle, then this file is available for free on toyploy.com. So go there and download it and you can uh, get uh, your own replacement stickers for an attack track. But uh, let's get cutting and stick these back on the vehicle. stickers make quite a big difference to how the attack track looks it so it really gives it quite a lot of color and depth you can see I've left a few of the original ones here on the side this one was actually put on uh, backwards so I've taken that one off and replaced it with a new printout and I think they match pretty well the original stickers that are on this vehicle are quite dull and sort of aged but uh, that's what happens with these so my uh, new stickers look quite vibrant but hopefully over time they will sort of bed in a little bit more and everything will start to blend together really what I could have done is removed all of the original stickers and uh, I don't think you would have noticed at all then but it's nice to keep some of the original ones if I possibly can. I've also taken the time to uh, give the battery cover a quick coat of paint. I had a look in my garage and I got, um, I've got a red paint and I've got a yellow paint so I just sprayed the red on quite liberally and then sprayed the yellow on top while it was still damp and I've managed to uh, sort of make a colour that's almost orange. It's not perfect but uh, yeah it's not too bad at all. So all we need now to do is add the uh, rubber bands to the wheels and I was having a search through eBay to see if I could find just some normal rubber bands but in uh, of black rubber and I was I didn't sort of actually manage to find anything that uh, would do the job but because of that search I came across these and these are actually the drive belts from old cassette recorders and they just happen to be pretty much the right size they are about four millimeters wide which is the gap between the sort of treads on these tracks and uh, the way they are measured uh, for drive belts is actually sort of uh, folded flat so I took a quick measurement of the wheels and I bought some that are uh, 11 centimeters folded flat so that means that's 22 centimeters around thinking that was about the right size I have to say these are possibly just a little bit too big if I would bought some that are 10 centimeters around they might have been a tighter fit but these ones do work and uh, we can easily slot them onto the wheel so you just have to push them over the wheel and wrap it round and you can see they fit quite nicely they're a little bit loose that's why I say if I would picked the 10 centimeter versions they might have been a slightly snugger fit but 
they do the job so I think this is what I'm going to go with. I'm sure you can get black rubber bands but I just wasn't able to find any when I was doing my searches and these uh, drive belts seemed another sort of good alternative to uh, those so maybe you can get uh, black rubber bands but uh, for now these uh, drive belts look the part. You can see they really do uh, actually look quite uh, sort of convincing and uh, much like the original ones. And so here we have the uh, finished attack track and it's been a fair amount of work because when we started obviously it was just a sort of bare bones of an attack track. Uh, we managed to get the motor working and that's all up and running. We've made new stickers, we've uh, got the new bands on the wheels, we've got a new seat belt and of course we have the new battery cover on the bottom. But I think it's uh, certainly been worth doing all of that work because the, the end result is something that looks really quite nice and is really very displayable again. It uh, just looks like it should have done back when you bought it from the shops. I did make one final change to the stickers on this. Uh, I just wasn't happy with the way the stickers looked when I first printed them out. I thought the matte paper just didn't do them justice so I actually took off all of those stickers that I'd applied. I've printed them out again on glossy sticky backed paper and as you can see that looks a whole lot better. They're just a little bit more shiny and I just think it makes the vehicle look that little bit nicer having those. So uh, you can sort of pick and choose what paper you want to use but in this instance I thought the glossy paper made it look a, a whole lot nicer. So I do need to say a massive thank you to Bass who very kindly sent in uh, the, sort of the remains of this attack track along with a load of other stuff which uh, you'll be seeing more He-Man and the Masters of the Universe restorations on my channel in the sort of coming months. So yeah big thanks to Bass for uh, sending that over. If you want the stickers for your uh, own attack track then go to toyploy.com and you can download those for free. I hope this video has been of interest to you. If it has then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.